Throughout her decades-long career, Ashanti has scored chart-topping singles, a Grammy Award and her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but not without enduring quite a bit of music industry drama along the way. Honestly, I'm not sure if another artist would be able to deal with what I've dealt with, the R&B icon tells people in this week's issue, opening up about the highs and lows she's endured since hitting the scene more than 20 years ago. Growing up in Long Island, New York, the daughter of Mom Tina Douglas, her longtime manager, and dad Ken K. Douglas, Ashanti discovered her voice at age 12 by singing Mary J. Blige's Reminisce for her parents, who started taking her to local singing competitions, which she often won. After two unsuccessful record deals as a teenager, she signed to music executive Irv Gotti's record label Murder Incorporated in 2002 and quickly shot to fame with number one hits like Always On Time and Foolish. It was a little bit of a shock from just having a regular life to boom, but it was a blessing, says the 42-year-old singer-songwriter, whose self-titled debut album sold nearly 505,000 copies in one week upon its release in 2002. When it did pop off for me, it really popped off. Murder Incorporated's only female R&B artist at the time, Ashanti often found herself working in rooms as the only woman among male rappers and hip-hop artists. I was always a tomboy, so I felt right at home with a bunch of big brothers, she recalls, noting that the landscape came with its challenges, which she welcomed. If there was a beat I wanted, and another rapper on the label wanted, we would have to battle it out, and whoever wrote the best record got the beat. So, it made me stronger. Throughout the early 2000s, she would also find herself compared to other women in R&B by fans and media outlets alike. While certain headlines still stick out today, the solo Beyoncé, she's no Ashanti, wrote the New York Times in 2003, Ashanti says there were never any issues between the genre's women behind the scenes. Reading that headline, I was just like, what's going on? We're cool, she says. Both of us, being young females that are following our dreams and doing what we loved, we were both happy for each other. It was never before tension. Having her mum and close-knit collaborators like Fat Joe. Errol and Gotti in her corner helped protect Ashanti from the dark sides of the music industry for a while. After a couple more albums and hit songs, however, the record label was accused of laundering drug money by federal agents in 2003 and went to try to live the matter through 2005. Gotti, 52, and Murder Incorporated co-founder, his brother Chris, were eventually acquitted of all counts. Throughout the trial, Ashanti looked to remain loyal to her family of colleagues and accompanied them to court, all while losing business due to her affiliation with the group. A lot of things got pulled from under me right when I was continuing to soar, she says. Around the same time, Ashanti began dating rapper Nelly and ventured into acting with films including 2006's John Tucker Must Die. Her connection to Gotti soured, which is since claimed was partially the result of a romantic relationship between them abruptly ending, allegations she denies, stating there was no relationship. I had love for Earth, she explains. We had our situation, but I think he blew it out of proportion. Murder Incorporated was in flux around the release of Ashanti, 